Some massive news on one of my favorite topics of all time, interstellar space travel. And no, we're not talking about some movie or some spaceship. This one starts way back in 2014 when we were all just going about our daily lives and then all of a sudden some sort of space something weighing about a thousand pounds and like this big, the size of a beach ball, blasted through Earth's atmosphere above the Pacific Ocean near Papua New Guinea. It turned into a fireball, started raining down these teeny tiny molten pieces of iron into the sea. Again, no one noticed. So fast forward five years later, Later, when Harvard professor Avi Loeb and his students started digging through old data, trying to find things that move way faster than normal meteors, and Eureka! They did the math, they told the world, we think that something interstellar might have crashed in the Pacific. They got laughed at by some in the scientific community, but then U.S. Space Command came forward and basically said, Oh, no, we think you actually might be right. Better yet, they think uh, they might have a pretty good idea of where it crashed. And just like that, the race was on. Professor Avi Loeb convinced a bunch of scientists to set off on a ship. They went out to find this thing in the ocean. They started pulling magnets on sleds along the seafloor. And boom, they came back with 700 tiny balls like that, smaller than BBs. And they sent them off to be analyzed at labs all over the world. And what they found was pretty wild. In particular, some of the samples were enriched or seemed to be enriched in the combination of three elements, uranium, beryllium, and lanthanum. That's a, an alloy combination that we've never seen on Earth before, or the moon, or even Mars. And with that, I want to bring in Professor Avi Loeb himself to explain what we are actually looking at. Professor, uh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I imagine this was this was like searching for a needle in a haystack, but under the sea with a magnetic sled. And you actually found something anomalous, right? Yeah, it's the first time that scientists analyze material from a big object that came from outside the solar system. And it's thrilling. Uh, in the sense that, first of all, this object was unusual. It was moving faster than 95% of the stars in the vicinity of the sun. And second, it uh, only disintegrated under extreme stress. So it was tougher than all the space rocks cataloged by NASA over the past decade, 272 of them. So that raised the possibility that maybe it's a Voyager like uh, meteor. Imagine Voyager that we sent out of the solar system crashing into a planet like the Earth once it exits the solar system and appearing as a meteor. It would have unusual material strength because it's made of stainless steel. And moreover, it would have an unusual speed because it was propelled uh, uh, by the rocket effect. And so we went out there to see what we find. And uh, amazingly, we found some uh, uh, tiny droplets from the surface of the object when it was exposed to the immense heat from the fireball that it created as it was moving through air. And uh, that by itself was not enough. We brought it back to Harvard, and my colleague uh, Stein Jacobson uh, has a very sophisticated lab where we analyzed the composition and found a composition that was never discussed in the scientific literature, unprecedented. We gave it the name Belau because beryllium, lanthanum, and uranium are enhanced by factors of hundreds relative to solar system abundances. So in the paper, you say this might be from like an exoplanet with a magma-like ocean or, or maybe like a supernova or possibly extraterrestrial. You were just talking about that Voyager. I know that's where you get a lot of uh, crap from people in the scientific community. No one bats an eye when you're like supernova or exoplanet. But when you say extraterrestrial, we pay attention. Sometimes you get laughed at by other scientists. But do you think that like that is a, a total legitimate um, uh, effort to, to uncover here? Yeah, definitely a possibility because we launched five probes to interstellar space over the past uh, half a century, uh, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11, and New Horizons. So imagine a civilization that had a much longer technological age and uh, it could have uh, polluted interstellar space with uh, debris, technological debris. This could be just like space trash, you know, and it would accumulate in interstellar space like plastics in the ocean. And we just need to look around us in our neighborhood. We haven't done so uh, until the last decade. So it's a completely new frontier and there might be low hanging fruit for us to pick up. So um, I'm a theoretical physicist, but yet I decided to lead an expedition an experiment to figure out <laughs> 
what this object was made of. And lo and behold, it's made of something we've never seen before. And the next step is to find bigger pieces of it. We might go back on another expedition because you can easily tell the difference between a rock and a technological gadget. The gadget may have buttons on it. Now, uh, uh, <laughs> Professor Loeb, how do we know that this isn't just, I mean, this is the bottom of the sea floor. The sea is so unexplored. How do you, how do you know that maybe like uranium and beryllium just hang out together down on the bottom of the sea floor? because we uh, also went to control regions where, that were very far from the meteor location and didn't find those things there, only near the meteor path. And moreover, we found an excess of spherules, these molten droplets, along the meteor path. And moreover, we found isotopes of iron that clearly indicate in the ratio of isotopes that uh, it cannot be from this Earth, it cannot be from the Moon or from Mars because the isotope ratio is very different than you find on these objects that are familiar to us uh, in the solar system. And, and Professor, we're almost out of time here, uh, but this is a very big question I've been dying to ask you. This is all coming at a time where you almost got three things happening in the search for extraterrestrial life. You've got very hard science, like, like what you're doing, SETI, that kind of stuff. You've got these very odd encounters and sensor anomalies with U.S. military pilots. And then you've got this bizarre testimony from a former intelligence officer who says he's been told, uh, like, there are alien bodies and alien craft that the government might have. But real quick, what do you make of all of that? Right, so it's all about evidence. You shouldn't believe stories that people tell you. So if Grush's testimony is supported by materials that we can all see, I would believe it. Otherwise, it could be fabricated. So let's wait and see. It may well be easier to collect the information from the bottom of the Pacific Ocean than to get it from politicians in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and we will wait and see for the next time you set out on a ship, Professor Avi, or Captain Avi Loeb, I should say. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.